Big congratulations to last month's winners, Comic Fam. Put your coats on. It's about to get frosty. At the table for another round of the coldest comic books in the comic book marketplace. Hit the like, slap the subscribe. You know we have a giveaway on deck. And what's this on the line? Broadcasting from somewhere on Spaceship Earth, we have David from Comic Book Investments. How you feeling, brother? I'm feeling great. It's a bit cold in here, so I got my blanket to keep me nice and warm. But yes, I'm ready to break some hearts with some nice, deep, cold cuts. Well, let's start them off with a little optimism and update at the list at number 10. Secret Wars 8, which was on our cold list last month, is looking green. Tell me about it. We got the origin of the black suit, the symbiote that later becomes Venom. The way an update works is we take the current month's average and compare it to the previous full month's average, which would be November, to see if there's a trend going in the right direction or in the wrong direction. And this is actually going in the right direction. We had a 9.4 back in November, on average, selling for $235. Now it averages $302. That is up 28%. A 9.6 averaged for $316 back in November. Now that average is for 365, that is up 16%. And a 9.8 average 708, now currently averages 794, that is up 12%. Now, David, this is looking good for Symbiote Keys. Do you suspect this has to do with the recent heritage auction sale of the original page from inside of this book selling for the most an original piece of comic art has sold for in comic history? I think, honestly, it has something to do with that a little bit. I think that just pushed this book up to a new level and it actually had a record sale the same month as well. All right, well, that's some good news, David, but let's turn up the AC with number nine, a cold book, X-Men number 101, the introduction of the Phoenix. Back in May, going for 12.50 down, 23% for an 8.5, now selling for $720. The 9.2, the June high was $1,560. That's down 23% this week, now selling for $1,199. So back in September, this had a record price for a 9.6 for $3,900. Now it currently sits at $2,700. That is down 31%. This book was a massive, massive key. Guy shooting straight up with the boom, and now it's kind of coming back down. I honestly think that this book will still fall a little more. We had some interesting sales that took place last year, 9.8s that were outlier sales. And I'm talking sales that exceeded $5,000 in expectation and then coming right back down. Whether there are investment groups purchasing these books, the sales happening on auction sites that don't retain their sales data for public consumption, it caused lower grade copies to have some volatility. Go easy on this one, but it's a major mutant key nonetheless. If you like what we do, utilize code TOM101 on the best comic app in existence, Key Collector Comics, available for both Android and iOS. Keep up with your key comic books, suggested pricing, catalog your comic books, learn about the industry, and you get to support the show. Next at the list, at number eight, we have Star Wars 42 to talk about the first appearance of The Mandalorian, Bubba Fett. What's this doing on the list, David? All right, so we got a 9-0 peaking back in June for $735. Now that sells for $510. That is down 31%. We got a 9.4 selling back in June as well for $1,000, now selling for $7.08, and that is down 29%. And the big one is a 9.6 sold in June as well for $1,600. That is down to $8.80. That is down 45%. I think the reason why this is dropping and not hitting new highs is because, honestly, the new series has been kind of a hit and a miss with a lot of different people, so not just a great hit. And I think that's affecting the book price. Considering that we're halfway through the series as is, I suspect that those who are investing heavily in this book are now deciding whether they're going to keep it long term or sell it. And we're seeing a lot of copies move now than we did last year when they were being purchased in abundance and for a higher price. However, seeing this book creep down gets me a little excited. Clearly, Boba Fett is here to stay. We have Mandalorian lore that's just begun to unravel. This may be a great time to grab this book. What do you think? 
I think it really depends on how this series continues to unfold, if it gets better or if it gets worse. And But I think in the long term, I still think this is a good key to have. And now we're looking at number seven, TMNT issue number two, the second appearance of the Turtles, the first appearance of April O'Neil, and more downward trends for single-digit TMNT, except for that number one, which keeps outpricing itself. We have a 9.4 going for $1,484 back in April. That's down 46% this week, now selling for $800. The 9.6 going for $2,525 in March. That's down 49% this week, selling for $1,000. 1299 Do you think the crazy amount of interest in turtles as we entered into 2021 is causing the downward trend this year because of how much these comic books went up, the heights they reached? Yeah, I think they just went way too high. People got way too crazy with FOMO, and now it's coming back down. I think turtles have a long history ahead of them, and I'm not worried, but I still think that these books will continue to drop outside of the first print number one and maybe second print number one. Those will still command quite a bit of money. The 9.8 back in June was hitting $5,517 for this book. That's down 40%, now selling for $3,000 295. Although that is a steep dip, this book has achieved rather high heights. And with the nostalgia cycle still in full swing, issue number one still commanding a premium, I suspect that if you are interested in investing and owning early single digit TMNT, your time may end soon if you want to get it on the low. Number six on the list, we got Ghost Rider 2, the first full appearance of Damien Hellstrom, the son of Satan himself. We got a 7.5 back in July, peaking at $230. Now that sells for $124. That is down 46%. An 8.5 back in June sold for $304. Now that sells for $185. That is down 39%. The lack of integration from the Hellstrom show on Hulu to the greater MCU at large, a decision Kevin Feige made, has clearly affected the value of this key comic, wouldn't you say? Yes, I didn't even watch the show. It didn't look that interesting to me. And to be honest, I thought this would be a show that would be canceled just based off the previews alone. I just saw it and I didn't hear anyone really talking about it after it came out. I think that type of feedback as well as the lack of integration combined to causing this 9.0 back in August to go from $441 down 50% now selling for 220 next at the list at number five. Oh my goodness. GI Joe number one. What's going on? So yes, we got another big drop here with 54%, a 9.4 selling back in May for 550. Now that sits at 255. Then we have the 9.6 going for $1,100 in May, down 54% this week, now selling for 500. The 9.8 high set in March was $2,550. And this was right around the time the newsstand hype was at its peak. It still is maintaining and affecting grades of the nine sixes and nine eights. However, we didn't see this change between direct and newsstand until soon after this took place, which is why I suspect we're seeing a 45% dip for the direct market nine eight. What do you think? Yes, so now it sells for $1,400. Yes, it's down 45%. And I think that has a lot to do with the fact that the Snake Eyes movie came out and it was not a hit like they're hoping. It was actually a massive bomb financially. So that kind of put the stop on any other future G.I. Joe movies. Speaking of adaptations that didn't quite land with the fans, we have DC Comics Presents 47 at the list at number four. The first appearance of He-Man. What's this? A 9.4 going for $910 back in June of last year, down 48%. Now selling for $472. Yes, and a 9.6 back in May selling for $1,300. Now sells for $593. That is down 54%. And a 9.8 recently in December sold for $3,500, but I think that was kind of an anomaly because now one just recently sold for $1,440. That's down 59%. Considering the hype was real with the Kevin Smith adaptation and not really landing with the fandom as much. Now, I didn't necessarily grow up with 80s tunes. I was more of a 90s tunes kind of person. I enjoyed the series, but I didn't really have much to compare it to. I'm not as affluent with He-Man. What about you? I never watched He-Man when I was growing up. I was more into the Turtles. So I didn't even watch the new one because I, He-Man's not my thing. 
I'm a turtles guy. Do you have a turtles tattoo? Uh, no, that's I, I plan on getting one. I wanted to get one on my calves, but I was waiting for them to get bigger because I work them out and they never got bigger. So I don't know. <laughs> I love it, man. I got all four turtles and shredder on my left arm. Next at the list at number three, a modern comic book, Captain America issue number six. Yeah. So this is the first appearance of the Winter Soldier, obviously. Bucky Barnes, which first appeared in Captain America Comics number one, but this is the first appearance of him as the Winter Soldier. A 9-4 back in August sold for $288. Now that currently sells for $105. That is down 63%. A 9-6 back in April sold for $475. Now that sits at $189, down 60%. The 9.8 in March of last year went for $850. That's down 66% this year so far with a low hitting 286. The show came out and now that the show's ended, who knows what's going to happen to the Winter Soldier? Is he going to appear in other MCU movies? No one has any idea. And I think that is the reason why it just continues to drop because there's no plans for the Winter Soldier to continue on past this TV show or any future MCU movies. Falcon and Winter Soldier was the second series to drop via Marvel on Disney+. Plus. The hype was real, comic fam. The WandaVision lead-in had some of the biggest spikes for some speculated books, and it carried over to amazing numbers that would be seen via Falcon and Winter Soldier's response. It was critically acclaimed. Thus, we are in a little bit of a lull, but keep in mind, a lot of these characters we are going to be seeing sooner than we expect because there's been so many delays over the last two years because of COVID. I have to tell the community to hit the like and subscribe here. You're following us here, and I appreciate that, but you got to go follow David's YouTube channel on comic book investments, and you have some auctions that you're doing on your website because you're a dealer full-time, and you're bringing the heat for the community. Yes, so we launched our very first auction on our website, collectorscomics.com. Go to it. It's live now. This Hulk 181 book right here, the 7.5, that is on the auction. It's time to get some good deals. We have three Hulk 181s, two giant size X-Men ones. We got X-Men ones, Fantastic Four number ones. We got tons of stuff. Our very first auction. Go follow me on my channel and remember to go to my website, collectorscomics.com. At the list of number two, we have Spider-Man Unlimited number one, 90s goodness, the first appearance of Shriek, seeing dips, I suspect, post the release of Venom 2. So we got a 9-4 back in June selling for $150. Now that sells for $65. That's down 57%. I don't want to get in too many spoilers, so I can't talk too much about why I think this book is dropping but I think it will continue to drop. A little ambiguous if we're going to see Shriek in the future, especially when we know what happens to Carnage in Venom 2 and how close of ties those characters have in the comic books and what we would expect to see in the future if they were going to be reutilized. Thus, a 9.6 going for $178 back in October is down 63% this week, now selling for 66 and we have a 9.8 selling back in May for $450. Now that sells for $118. That is down 74%. And Tom, I heard you have a giveaway to do. It's so cold, I can see my breath, David. And indeed, I do have a comic to give away. Someone is grilling the chicken number one. Only 100 of these were made. And if you comment, like, and subscribe, let me know what you think about this cold list. We may make another one and it lets you to win this giveaway. Why don't you hit them with the number one frostiest book of the month? So we have the coldest book of the month on this list. That is Eternals number three, a 9.4 back in May, sold for $340. Now that sells for $74. That is down the biggest drop we have, 78%. Now, I didn't mind Eternals, David. I know you didn't really care for the movie. Mm -hmm. It was kind of nope. a so-so movie for me. However, I did like the outro scene, seeing Star Fox, seeing Pip the Troll. CGI was a little strange, but regardless, Cersei's first appearance in the Eternals has indeed dipped, and I believe it's because this movie was critically panned. We have a 9.6 going for $575 in May. That's down 78% as well, now selling for $125, and wait for it, we got the 9.8. This hit heights back in June of $1,500. Well, that book's down 69%.
The coldest book of the month now selling for 467 hot damn comic fam. We appreciate your time today as always. And you guys out there have an ice day and geek responsibly. <laughs> oh, enough said comic fam. We got two other videos for you to check out last month's cold list. The last podcast that we released, we made them for you. Enjoy them and have a great week.